Hello and welcome back to this series on Spacey for the Digital Humanities. In the last video, I showed you how to create an HTML data visualization using the built-in Spacey uh, uh, functions in Displacey. In this video, I'm now going to show you how to kind of customize these a little bit to make it where your data visualization only highlights specific entities, so person, organization, etc. And I'm going to show you how to provide some custom colors to those entities. And we're going to be working today with just the person tag. So what you're going to do, what you're going to do is you're going to create a series of dictionary objects. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a dictionary called colors. And this dictionary is going to take the value of the items that you want to see uh, uh, altered in some way. So since we're only going to be working with uh, the person tags, we're going to be working with person only. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the key person in quotes, all capital. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the color now to what we want it to see. So what I want to see in the color is let's just say instead of the standard, I believe it's like a pink or purplish color, I want to see something a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a random hex color, this dark purple or dark maroon or whatever looks kind of interesting. And I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to make it like that. And then I'm going to put it in quotes. And what this is going to do is it's going to... Ooh, <laughs> there we go. What this is going to allow me to do is to pass in a new background color to the actual HTML. And when it ever it discovers a, an entity class that is a person, it will change all entity classes in the HTML over here. Okay. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create another... Uh, another uh, object and this is going to be called options and this is the uh, way in which you do it in the spacey documentation and what this is going to be is that we're going to pass in the options of ints and this is going to take this is the key and this is the value uh, the value is going to be a list and we're going to pass in the kind of ints that we want to see passed exclusively so i want to see just person passed in so i'm just putting in person if you want to see org, you could do something like that, and you could go on down the list. So that's what I'm going to do. But then what I want to do is to tell it in this dictionary what color to be. So I'm going to make another key, of colors, and give that a value of, you guessed it, colors. So what this dictionary options is doing is it is read, setting up a dictionary where you have ints equals this person, and colors is going to be equal to whatever we see in here. So when we see an entity of person as it goes through the list, it's going to find it in this diction dictionary, and it's going to associate this specific color with it. Now what we need to do down here in our HTML object is pass in one more uh, argument. And we're going to say options is equal to options. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for this options tag and look at this, which is then going to look at this. Take a moment, look through the logic of that. Uh, hopefully it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, I will explain it to you. Just leave a comment down below and I'll explain it further or I'll make another video. So I'm going to run this now. And what you're going to see is the HTML over here change a little bit. Okay, and it's done. So I'm going to bring it up here and we're going to refresh. And as you can tell, we now have this maroon color over here. It's very different from what we saw before. Uh, what we saw before was a whole bunch of things tagged up. But if you've noticed, the font color remains black. And uh, all the other things in this markup are not present. We don't see organizations. We don't see anything else. So that's one of the things that you can do. But because you're working with a background, you can pass in some pretty cool stuff. So let's change this up a little bit. This is in the documentation. I'm not creating this on my own. So we're going to pass in linear gradient, a uh, very simple uh, HTML code. And within parentheses, we're going to pass in how this is going to look. So we're going to do 90 degrees. And what this is going to do is make a linear gradient effect on our, um, on our uh, person tags background. 9CFC. And again, I'm getting all of these hex uh, numbers from documentation. FC 9C. E7, and now we're going to run this, and what you're going to see is a new effect on our background, and 
like I said, this isn't the documentation. Now you see all person tags labeled only. It's a little bit more legible, but you see something kind of cool. You see something with a linear gradient background. So what we're doing here, I'm going to show you right now in the HTML what we're actually doing, is we are changing this mark class. So if you look at the HTML, let's go ahead. I'm going to close this Alice in Wonderland and bring this into the main fold. So this is our HTML file. So what we're seeing is a div class being opened up whenever it finds an entity, and then a mark class that is going to specify what kind of entity it is and uh, do those uh, certain effects. And so what we're seeing uh, taking place here is a person tag. So the person tag is getting all of this special uh, special delineations. So we see linear gradient up here. So if you want to actually customize an individual uh, an individual tag in the sheet, you can do that. So let's say we don't want uh, this first chapter thing to appear the way it does. We really just want it to appear with just this. We can save this, refresh our object, and now we see that we have something different over here. We have uh, chapter one down, still getting that person tag, which is incorrect, but we see that it is just pink. What's cool about this, and also one of the limitations of this, is that you can change individual tags and customize and tweak your HTML to be different for individual people. Uh, in, a, in a later, later video, I might show you how to do this, but we can create a simple Python script that'll read in the HTML, and anytime it finds the character Alice, it'll have one character or one color. Anytime it finds uh, the character rabbit, it could have a different one. We can make it white. That'd be kind of cool since it's a white rabbit. My point is, is that really your, uh, now that you know how to do this and change the color, your imagination is really the only thing limiting you at this point. But one of the drawbacks to Spacey, and I hope they update this in the future, is that we don't have the ability to alter any other pieces in the HTML uh, span class or mark class entity. And this means that we can't change, and I have tried, we can't change the line height. As you saw, I was able to do it for that one instance where Alice appeared. We can't change uh, really anything else other than other than that. And even though I was able to insert the line height here, I had to customize and tweak that to get rid of the line height down below. As you see in this next line or class entity, uh, we have a line height of 10 here where I experimented with this possibility. And then we scroll down and we see a line height of one here. So it didn't actually do what I hoped it would do. That's going to be it for this video, though. This is how you insert some really kind of minor but important customization techniques to your Displacy object or your Displacy rendering. Uh, you can change the colors and you can limit the number of tags that appear. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.